G'day guys, welcome to the round 22 edition of Just The Tips with your boys, j Dog and Drew Nizzle. Jersey, I'm losing count of the amount of times I've said this year, but how wacky of a round was it for footy tipping this week? Very wacky. I only got two out of eight tips so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an absolute stinker. I've only got three, but I think I got the first four wrong. So obviously the round isn't completed for round 21 with the Eagles taking on Melbourne tonight at Optus Stadium, which we will both be in attendance. Go D's. So check out our vlogs. But we can't tell you who the, the leaders are at the moment, but I will flash them on the screen very shortly. But at the moment, somebody has six out of eight. So nobody's got better than six, which speaks to how stanky this round was. El Stanko, as they say, in Barcelona. So like you said, you're currently on two correct tips. I'm on three. Uh, I tipped North Melbourne to beat Richmond, which was a bad tip. Um, I tipped Richmond. That's one that I got right. Yeah, exactly. And then I tipped uh, Hawthorne to beat Collingwood. You tipped Collingwood. Mm. And then I tipped Brisbane to beat Fremantle. And two weeks in a row, the difference between our tips has actually been the Fremantle tips. So. Yeah, both got the showdown as well. Mm. Geniuses. Yeah, geniuses. I've <laughs> nearly bloody lost that. Yeah, <laughs> imagine. So uh, this is the point where I will show you guys on the screen who is the leaders of each round. So uh, while I can't read them out because they haven't updated yet, please enjoy this list of names. I am just <laughs> stalling so that you have enough time to read them. Let's get back to the video. Pancakes. Before we get into it all, don't forget to check out the sponsors of the True Footy YouTube channel, manscaped.com, uh, for all your ball shaving needs. Druzy, we're approaching spring. Uh, so mm. it's coming to the end of winter, so it's time to prepare your rig. I've been going to the gym lately as well, but I've also been indulging in some manscaping activities as oh, well, yeah. just uh, for the women that will never, ever see me naked. Whole lot of man stuff, baby. <laughs> How cool are those meteors, bro? That's such a cool ad. Make sure you guys use Manscaped yeah. code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout. There you go. Exactly right. You too can indulge in all the manscaping products. Uh, they've got the Lawnmower 4.0 now, a fresh set of boxes that you can wear, which are very oh, yeah. comfortable and very flattering on the package, I will say, and then also some ball deodorants and moisturizers as well things you don't think you need but you, but do. you do believe me that's it guys just go to manscaped.com get 20 percent off and free shipping on their products if you simply use the code true 20 all caps all one word at checkout and you can enjoy the spoils it's a win-win mate you have clean balls and you support the true footy channel instead of not supporting the true footy channel and having gross balls yes so. and we know you're out there let's get into the video <laughs> All right, let's start with uh, what may or may not be the first game of the round. Obviously, it's a floating fixture and the venues are all up in the air as well. But we'll start off with Brisbane versus Collingwood. This game is currently fixtured for the Gabba, um, but there's obviously uncertainty about you know the COVID situation mm. there. So it could be moved. Um, and if it's moved to Victoria, again, this could be... Uh, it could be impactful on the result, but in terms of the form lines, Brisbane are just coming off an 11-goal win over your boys, Fremantle. I thought they played really, really well, to be honest, um, and they, they looked quite clean and skillful, sort of like how Geelong played against you in the wet here as well. <laughs> yeah. um, Brisbane, again, looked really composed and uh, coming out of a form slump. Um, it's been a really, really timely boost for their form. Collingwood obviously got done by Hawthorne, coming off a really good win the week before. Um, it was a battle of the two bottom four sides. Who is, who is most in form, and I think Hawthorne proved that they're a little bit more convincing on mm -hmm. current form as well. These two sides have played once this year already, and Zach Bailey kicked the winner after the siren as well. Yes, he's come leaps and bounds since then as well. He's improved he as the, the season's progressed. Yeah, he's been fantastic this year. To what extent do you believe the Lions are back, baby? <laughs> uh, medium. Medium. Me medium. Medium convinced. <laughs> yeah. Well, they've had a pretty lame month or so, mm -hmm. the Lions. But yeah, against Frio, they just looked like they were playing AFL Evo with the sliders up. They were just hitting every pass on the tier. They were so clean coming out of their back half and Gross. clinical in front of goal. They looked like they had a good team camaraderie. It looked like the belief was back because after every single goal, they were losing their minds. Joey Danaher kicked a set shot right in front of me, looked at the fans, and then spat on the ground. That was pretty cute. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, no, the Lions just need that belief back, and I think that win against Frio could potentially just revive their season somewhat. So obviously going to tip the Lions in this one. Uh, but yeah, Collingwood had a pretty disappointing result on the weekend, so not too much to say there. But I'll tip the Lions to win this one by 32. Yeah, you highlight the Lions were really clean coming out of their back half, and by contrast, you were always particularly dirty coming out of your back half. I think this form could be the game that snaps Brisbane back into form. They're still in the shower for the final, for the top four, um, kind of. But again... Um, Top four might not mean as much this year. Either way, I think Brisbane are back. They'll win this game regardless of the venue. Uh, I'll say if it's in Queensland, they'll win this by five goals. If it's in Victoria, they'll win it by 18 points. Do you know why Ferrari had a dirty back half? <laughs> they didn't manscape. Exactly. That's <laughs> what I was going to say. You manscaped and you'll play like Brisbane. Clean your buttholes. 
The second fixtured game of the round is Geelong hosting St Kilda at GMHBA. This one, we're a little bit more confident, will stay in Victoria between two Victorian sides. And I think regional Victoria at the moment is not, mm. not in lockdown anyway. So we can probably assume this is the right venue. Last week, the Cats were shocked at this very ground by the GWS Giants, the team that has uh, played pretty well there in the past, but uh, it was still a surprising result. You know, the Giants have been up and down this year. The Geelong haven't really been. They haven't dropped too many games this year, so I guess they were due one. Um, but either way, they it was a game where they had a lot more of supply, a lot more inside 50, similar to their loss against Sydney this year. Um, but, you know, eight goals, 17 really stopped, told the story. With St Kilda, they're just coming off one of the bigger upsets this year. It's hard to pinpoint it as the biggest upset because, gee, it's been a big yeah. year for upsets. Probably the most most upset field season that I can remember. And then the football's been upsetting as well. Yeah, yeah. I just haven't been happy. Like a stomach. Either way, really good performance from St Kilda. It's kind of typical of their season where they'll put out a performance like this after, you know, some bad uh, games. But, you know, Higgins kicked four um, and it was kind of, we said on the Drew Footy Show, it was kind of the flip of the first time they played Sydney mm. um, where, you know, he was inaccurate and they lost and this time he had his kicking boots on and they won and Jack Steele, you know, as he is every week was fantastic. So, to what extent do you think the Saints could pull off an upset win against the Cats? Are they no. vulnerable? No. No. Okay. They, will, they don't want to win this um, because that, they have a similar cycle to Freo. They'll win one, disappointing results, win one, disappointing yeah. results and yeah, Geelong are looking impenetrable even though they were penetrated this week against <laughs> the Giants. Some giant penetration. <laughs> but yeah, Geelong are going to want to bounce back and I don't think St Kilda will win this game although right if you look at the St Kilda versus Sydney game from earlier in the season they lost that game due to inaccuracy yep. St Kilda played Geelong at Marvel earlier in the season and they lost that game due to inaccuracy they were all over them for about two and a mm-hmm. half quarters so you know straight kicking could win them this game but down at GMHBA the Cats may be without some of their, their big guns as well mm. Tui Dangerfield and Rowan could be out Good but points. Uh, yeah I think the safe tips Geelong I'm going to tip Geelong. I don't see the Saints having two good results in a row with their the way their season's gone. So I'll tip Geelong to win this one, probably by about 28. Yeah, I think that's a, that's the conservative tip, and it's probably where I'm leaning as well. I think Geelong bat pretty deep, and without their stars, I still think they'll, they're they going to be a very, very tough opponent. Can St Kilda kick accurately all night and upset them? Yes, but obviously you'd be very brave man to tip that. So I'm going to say the Cats win by 26 points. The next game we're going to talk about is Gold Coast hosting Essendon at what is currently fixtured for Metricon, although as we stated earlier, the uh, there's a bit of uncertainty as to whether we can play games in Queensland. So that, that will influence it as well. If this becomes a Victorian game, then suddenly Essendon are the hosts. The Suns obviously had one of their better wins of the season this year, rolling um, Carlton in, as you said, the Dan Gorringe Cup, and much to the chagrin of Gorringe as well, as you see he lost a tattoo bag yeah. in this game as well. So it'll be interesting to see where he puts Stewie Jew on his body. My Pro- guess is the cheeks. Yeah, it'd have to be the cheeks or just like a whole back piece because where else are you going to fit him? A whole back piece? <laughs> <laughs> Stewie Jew needs some space, all right? Oh, you're not going to chuck him on a wrist or an ankle, are you? Because yeah. otherwise it'd like wrap around the whole way and it's like a 2D object that he's going to try to get on there. Be interesting if you had to get it from like the shoulders up because if you had to fit in the beach ball he's got under his shirt <laughs> probably, then it becomes a much, much harder tattoo. You should get like a side profile Stewie Jew like a Homer Simpson. Like just have the gun <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> we like it short, you're a good guy. On a more serious note, uh, Gold Coast, you know, had a fantastic game. Took Miller continues to keep his face in the uh, All Australian selections. Mines, um, two goals and 34 possessions, and he was well supported by Anderson and Powell as well. Essendon, uh, kind of the talk of the town. There's a few big stories out of this round, but Essendon beating the Dogs has kind of, you know, in my opinion, made finals theirs to lose with mm. the, the top eight race at the moment. And Peter Wright kicking seven goals was huge. A player, you know, who hasn't really uh, set the world alight so far in his career. He's just been serviceable. Um, I think him kicking seven and, you know, maybe sort of giving a bit of hope that he could be a real gun of the future, that is a big story in itself. Needs to be consistent, though. It, it does, yeah, exactly right. Um, He's a big man, 25 years old. Yeah, maybe his best football's ahead of him. But Let's hope he can reach the heights. Mm. Get him. He's tall. Yeah, I hope you're right about that. Ah, that was two jokes in one. We're back, baby. <laughs> Last time these two sides met, back in 2020, it was a draw. Could we see another thrilling contest? It was, it was. Mm. I don't see Gold Coast winning two on the trot yeah. against two sides like Carlton and then Essendon. Mm. It'd be massive if they could and then really put them on on the radar of a side that's up and coming. But I think Essendon are probably the best of the rest in current form out of that like blob of teams yeah. that are just disappointing every week. I Al- think Essendon, Along with GWS, I think they're, yeah. they're clearly the better of the, to that group. Yeah, I think they're the more exciting. And having a scalp like they did last week against the Bulldogs was absolutely massive. So can they back that up? That's another question on everyone's lips. 
They've been fairly reliable this year, to be fair, Essen, and they haven't fluctuated too hard. They've, they've lost the haven't... games they've expected to lose. Yeah, sort of thing. yeah. We've but been pumped in them. Yeah, that's true. They've that, it's particularly early in the season, but I think they're a little bit more reliable now. Mm. I, I, if this was a St Kilda or a West Coast or GWS, then I think the question would be more fair to ask. But mm. um, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking Essendon aren't too prone to having terrible days. So who do you think is going to win? Yeah, two exciting teams, though. I like watching both these sides. Mm. Um, so two young, exciting sides. I'm going to tip Essendon. Safe tip. I'll go 14 points. Yeah. I think Essendon will win, and I think they come to be a better side, but I need to tip an upset. And I'm going to tip the upset for this game because I think Essendon are fairly average at Metricon. I think their record there is uh, a it little is. bit El Stanco. And Ooh. it's it's not... I, I genuinely expect Essendon to win this game, but... I need to cash up a tip somehow, and it's, I'm going to pick this game. So I'll, I'll tip Gold Coast to win a massive upset by five points. It wouldn't really be that much of an upset. like Well, not really. in the context of all the upsets that have happened yeah. lately. That's true, but I... Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think Gold Coast are a good side. It wouldn't be like a North Melbourne beating West Coast sort of upset. I don't recall. <laughs> <laughs> the next game we've got is a particularly juicy one for the final eight race. Two teams that are definitely still chances to make the eight. Uh, GWS are playing Richmond, and this game is fixtured for you know Giant Stadium, but I think we can assume there's no football in Sydney this round. So, again, where does this game go? Does it go to Perth? Does it go to Adelaide? I'm inclined to think no. They'll probably put it in Victoria. Mm. But, again, that becomes a Richmond home game. They've already played these t- uh, this game in Marvel this year. So, Big question mark, and that will probably influence my tip, so it's really hard to comment. But we'll start with the Giants. They just overcame Geelong at GMHBA. Massive win in the context of their season. Toby Green has one of the BOG, uh, close to BOG, and then gets rubbed out as well, which is a massive blow. But generally speaking, they played really well. And Isaac Cumming had a 1,000 mm. metres gain. So coming a 1,000 metres in a game, that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> Richmond, on the other hand, uh, beat North Melbourne in a game where North, you know, cooked him in the first half and then ran out of steam and Richmond really piled on the pressure and it was just an avalanche and the potatoes. of potatoes. Yeah, why? <laughs> cooked, steamed, oh, okay. <laughs> potatoes. So North Melbourne can really stew in that last. <laughs> yeah, once Richmond started playing on their terms, it was, uh, it was quite one-sided at times, mm. even though North, you know, uh, didn't look bad by any stretch. Richmond probably gained a lot of confidence out of that and it keeps them in the final eight race as well. Last time they met, Early this year, it was at Marvel. It could be at Marvel again. And Richmond won a, a really thrilling game. One of the games of the year by four points. How do you see this particular game going? I don't know, man. R- Richmond's best we saw last week against North Melbourne. 53-point swing. Come back and won the game. And mm-hmm. they've, they've looked disjointed. I've said that a lot this this year. But GWS as well, like they're just so inconsistent, man. It's so hard to predict, especially with these teams outside of the top eight. Like yeah. You just don't know which side's going to show up this Toby week. Green out. One of the best players in the comp. They've got his position. quite a few injuries as yeah, well. exactly. I don't know. Who are you going to tip? I, it's Honestly, I think I'm going to change it depending on where this game is fixtured. Mm. But I'm actually... I'm actually like, if this was in Sydney, I think the Giants tend to beat Richmond in Sydney. Yeah. And I would be very confident in tipping them because I think they're a better side. But if this game gets moved to Marvel, I could see Richmond just plucking this game from their cheeks and winning. Yeah. Oh, man. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put Richmond in as a placeholder. But if it gets moved to a more neutral venue... Uh, I know Richmond fans will say that they don't play at home at Marvel, but they're still, yeah. they're still probably a better Marvel side than the Giants, as, as we saw earlier this year. So, this is I'm such thinking a... Richmond Day. I'm going to go Richmond by eight points, subject to change. Yeah, this is a very difficult game to tip, eh? Hmm. Can I tip a draw? Yeah, you I'll tip it's a draw. pointless. Though. <laughs> <laughs> no, you give, give it a tip. I, I don't have any reason to tip either of these sides, because they're both been so disappointing. It's like, yeah. who is worthy of my tip here? I think yeah. GWS is the better team. Richmond have been inconsistent too. No, I'll tip, I'll tip Richmond. They, they beat the Lions. They looked good a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And they look good this week. I'll tip, I'll tip Richmond to win like 18 points. If Toby Green was in, I would probably flip my tip. But I'm going to go with Richmond for now. Flip your tip. Flip my tip. Save yeah. that for later, please. Next up, we have Hawthorne hosting the Western Bulldogs. Again, currently fixtured for Utah's. Uh, but I presume, you know, there's no games in Tasmania the last week. Uh, Hawthorne Collingwood got moved. So the sense the reason this game could be in Victoria again, potentially the MCG, uh, based on who these two teams are. Hawthorne coming off a good win against the Pies. Uh, two form sides of the bottom four playing off. And Hawthorne proved to be the better of the those two teams Tom Mitchell was fantastic again 44 possessions putting together a very good season it's good mm. to see him sort of 
uh, return to what is close to that brown low form, particularly in the second half of this year, I would say. Um, that leg break really set him back. And that win for Hawthorne will give them uh, a lot of buoyancy because, you know, it kind of rules them out of the wooden spoon conversation as well. The dogs were stunned, as we touched on earlier this video, by Essendon um, going down by 13 points at Marvel Stadium. That was a big shock. I think mm. they generally play well against Essendon. But uh, again, you know, top teams are allowed a bad day. And it was compounded even further by Josh Bruce doing his ACL in the dying seconds. And we talked a bit on the Drew Footy Show what effect will have that have on their premiership chances. Mm. It stands to reason that it, it could be a massive blow considering it's an important avenue to goal with the amount of goals he's kicked this year. But 48. 48? Oh, trivia. How do you see this game going, assuming it's at the MCG? I reckon Bulldogs just dominate the clearance all day long. Wayman was really good for them in the last few weeks, and he's not in the side. I don't know what's happened to him. He's probably just gone for a walk and got lost, young Cody. But yeah, we're going to need players like Ugo Hagen to step up in that forward line. Norton. Drew Hannison needs to start contributing to goal. Lots of hands make light work, Jesse, but you can't score with your hands. You need to score with your feet. So these forwards need to put their feet together and kick lots of goals in the absence of Josh Bruce because they are going to miss that left peg. But I just see them, yeah, they'll, they'll win this game. They're not going to lose to Hawthorne. I don't believe, although Hawthorne upset uh, Melbourne, so... This really is like just an internal model. Like, yeah. just, like, just convincing yourself one way and the other. <laughs> oh, no idea, Ray. <laughs> you got an insight into my thoughts here, boys. Bulldogs. I think, I, I respect Hawthorne's ability to win this game if mm. the dogs are off, but then I think the dogs are unlikely to not play well after playing well yeah. against Essendon. I mean, some teams slump for a period of time, and I just think the dogs are too good to let that happen. So yeah. I think, uh, and they've been playing well at the G this year, and again, a massive assumption this game's at the G, but if it is, dogs will win this by 33 points. The next game we'll talk about is almost certainly going to stay at the G, you'd think. Melbourne is hosting the Adelaide Crows at that ground. Obviously, Melbourne haven't played, as we record this video, they've played West Coast tonight, but I'm pretty confident in saying they're probably going to be coming off a win. Um, let's just hope it's not too much of a injury-riddled encounter um, so that there's no team news to talk about for this game. <laughs> On the other hand, Adelaide sort of dragged Port Adelaide down to their own level uh, in the showdown and, and almost beat them as well. They, they led the whole game and they did so without Tex as well and I think they deserve a lot of credit. Uh, obviously, a bit of Not a, Tex. Tex not, deserves not a Not Tex. <laughs> hey, thank you for clarifying. No, I just mean it's a PR nightmare and when, you're, when your best player but, uh, you'd say uh, <laughs> um, and also, you know, a, a leader of the club you lose him, you could forgive Adelaide for sort of dropping away, but they mm. didn't. And um, even though it wasn't the, the best contest, and I think poor Adelaide will say they could have played a lot better, uh, there's a lot of positives in that. And added to that, you know, guys like Schoenberg, he had 31 possessions in this game. The the future looks bright, and uh, they've at least been competitive for most of the year this mm. year. So obviously last time they met um, was one of the games of the year, probably the game of the year. We yeah. watched at the uh, the Canfield yes. right before Fremantle and Sydney, and, um, you know, Adelaide won by a point. So... How do you think this particular fixture will go? I see Melbourne just winning this one quite comfortably uh, at the G. They, they play the G well. And I think Adelaide is sort of starting to run out of steam at this point in the season. They've been looking pretty flat. Like So the last win they had was against Hawthorne. They haven't won any of the others in their last five. So yeah, there's no reason to tip Adelaide here against uh, against the Ds, although they did beat them earlier in the season. Yeah. Internal monologue. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Melbourne, Adelaide, Melbourne, Adelaide, Melbourne, Adelaide, Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> no, they should win this comfortably. Surely you're pumping like they did against Gold Coast. I'll back them in to win by 40. Yeah, I, I think uh, this game being at the MCG and also Adelaide having no techs of an important avenue to go, and I think an important part of them causing a massive upset, um, I can't see the Crows even challenging in this game, so I'll say Melbourne win by 57 points. Next game is North Melbourne hosting the Sydney Swans at Marvel Stadium. North Melbourne coming off uh, a kind of topsy-turvy game against Richmond where they dominated for periods and then got dominated in other periods, and they ended up losing the game by five goals, mm. but there was a lot of positives with their youth, I think. There was passages of play, and I said this to you on the Drew Footy Show, where you know North would be terrible for about 10 minutes, and then they would go end-to-end, the -end and the ball wouldn't touch the ground once, and you yeah. think, wow, that was actually very skillful and impressive. Uh, guys like Zerha, I think, kicked four, um, and LDU had 38 possessions as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, they're, they're entertaining to watch, but obviously it just didn't quite come together for them against Richmond, and the Swans had a rare upsetting loss uh, against the Saints. They've been pretty consistent this year, Sydney, but couldn't quite lift themselves for this contest. Um, going down by five goals. They were kind of strangled by the Saints, buddy. I think he had two touches in the first half. I think he only kicked one goal for the game, and uh, it was their lowest score since round 13 as well. So the Saints did a really good defensive job on them as well. North haven't beaten Sydney since 2018. Is there any chance they knock them off in Marvel Stadium this week? It's a good time to have them. It is a very good time to have them because 
Sydney have been seen to have very hot form, but also be beatable in some games. Like, mm. Let's not forget, they lost to the Gold Coast. Mm. Not many teams do that, except yeah. for Carlton. So, um, you know, this game is probably winnable for North Melbourne. And if they can bring their best for four quarters, I think it can match Sydney. We've seen it against... Uh, well, we saw against Richmond that first half performance was really good. Obviously, they got up against West Coast when they played for well, about two and a half, three quarters. Um, so, yeah, if they can bring that consistency, which they don't really do as a young side, uh, they could potentially win this game. That was a very long-winded argument for them to win, but I don't think they will. So, <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell, this is a mess. But, uh, yeah, Sydney are a much better outfit. Could see North just pipping this one, though, mm. really. Like, if they show up how they did against Carlton, for example, just foot on the throat. But, I don't know. This will be a good This will be a good game, I reckon. I think Sydney mm. will narrowly win. Uh, I'll go 19 points. I think this will be a very high-pressure game. Yeah, I think North Melbourne are certainly capable of taking it up to Sydney, particularly if Sydney's you know just come off that, that loss against St Kilda, so they're a bit vulnerable. But I kind of also think if Sydney hadn't lost last week, I'd probably be more thinking this is a stinky mm. upset, but I just think Sydney are too good to let that happen yeah. again. It'll be a big reality check. I think Sydney will win by 25 points. Next, we've got Port Adelaide hosting Carlton at Adelaide Oval. We said that Port Adelaide were dragged down to the Crows level um, to only win by four points. And again, they were heavily fancy to win. Uh, Elia Elia took home the medal as well for an outstanding performance. And then, you know, the typical guys like Wines and Boak also played really well in the midfield. And Carlton were probably one of the more disappointing stories this week, going down to the Gold Coast Suns after having beaten St Kilda fairly easily the week before. Newman and Walsh played well for the Blues, but it's kind of an all too familiar tale yeah. where Carlton, you know, get a bit of confidence, bit of optimism, and then have their hopes dashed the following week. And I think they're completely out of the finals race now, if I'm not mistaken. So given that Port Adelaide have never lost to Carlton at Adelaide <laughs> Oval, uh, what chance do you think the Blues have of knocking off Port here? Very minimal, Jesse. Very minimal. Mm, yes. <laughs> Port are going to have a party. I think, against Carlton. Their defence was the, the key thing that stood out to me in that showdown. We spoke about it on the Drew Footy Show, but Burton, Houston, and Aaliyah Aaliyah on that half-back line were magnificent. And when you've only really got one good avenue to goal in uh, in Harry Mackay, just chuck a little Aaliyah Aaliyah on him, and you should be all right, to be honest. Kerno was decent. He had a, had a goal or two against uh, Gold Coast, but... Um, it's going to take him a while to really get into his groove, and I don't think they're going to pose much of a threat to Port Adelaide, to be honest. This could come back to bite me on the ass, but I think Carlton, you are shite. Yeah, I just think Port are a class or two above Carlton, and I don't think this will be an issue for them. I'm going to back Port to have a win here at home by 33 and uh, a misery compiler for Carlton. <laughs> a misery compiler. Don't like a good, hashtag it. Good wrestler name. The misery compartment, <laughs> weighing in at 140 pounds on my shoulders. Yeah, we, we talk about Port Adelaide often this year as not dropping the games that um, they're not expected to lose. While they didn't lose to Adelaide, I kind of think it was almost still kind of a shock. Like they nearly lost to Adelaide um, and it could have potentially cost them top four, um, yeah. but they didn't. And I'm thinking they'll still get a bit of an awakening from that game, a bit of a reality check. you got to be on. I think they're going to win this game by about 38 points, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. All right, the final game of the round is the Western Derby. Fremantle hosting the West Coast Eagles at Optus Stadium. Not sure when this game will be fixed. Shoot, you good there, bro? <laughs> I'm just fucking ready, bro. <laughs> I think I've read that it might be Saturday night, which will be quite interesting. Hopefully, mm. the weather's good. But uh, in terms of our predictions and previews for that game, you're going to have to head to Drewsy's channel a little bit later in the week. We have recorded a preview for this game with all our tips and predictions as well. So do go check out Drewsy's channel. Out on Thursday. Out on Thursday. Yes, I'm reliably informed. 130 WST. We will also be live streaming this on the True Footy YouTube channel as well, guys. So tune in, enjoy, and uh, hopefully the you're not tuning in to see the Eagles get battered. Should we just drop a, drop a tip here? Just a yeah. little teaser? All right, we can do it. I've tipped the Eagles. I've tipped the Eagles. Yeah. Shock, <laughs> shock and awe. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next week. Cheers. Bye.